Welcome back to the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Raymond Wu. We're continuing our conversation with Ms. B. Kim Shao, and in this segment, we're going to discuss the incoming U.S. administration with B. Kim. B. Kim, I know that uh, you know, 2008 was a very important year politically for the U.S. as well as for Taiwan. We both had presidential elections, and we elected Mr. Ma ying and the U.S. voters elected Mr. Barack Obama. How would you think that U.S. foreign policy will be different or the same under President Obama? Well, I, I think there's some, you know, the broader trends or characteristics of, of the Obama administration that might be different is mm -hmm. I think, first of all, mm -hmm. um, they do talk about, they talk more about a multilateral approach. That's right. Um, and that would require, of course, um, you know, rebuilding U.S. credibility mm -hmm. with allies around the world in handling exactly. global situation. Um, and, and I think allies would also have to think about what kind of role that they want to play mm -hmm. um, in, in this global situation. You know, I was in Japan a few weeks ago, and, yes. and um, there is some uncertainty within Japan about how the new Obama administration would look at Japan or look at the region. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I simply tell my Japanese friend, you know, like Taiwanese, you know, we should not ask what the Americans will do for us. We mm -hmm. should think about how we can work with the Americans in a multilateral framework. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think this would be a very um, different approach. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. will have to reestablish also its leadership here in Asia. Mm. Um, the Bush administration has been very much focused uh, Middle East. in the Middle East mm. uh, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and there has been a leadership vacuum mm -hmm. uh, in this region, and mm -hmm. which China has you know, been very effective in trying to fill mm -hmm. um, this leadership role in the region. And, and perhaps some countries welcome that. But I think for Taiwan's current strategic interests, um, it I think we're better off with a, a balance, but you know I'm talking about Taiwan's interests. But, but from a U.S. perspective, um, the U.S. needs to think about what kind of role it wants to play in the world. Mm -hmm. um, does it want to continue to carry on the responsibility as a world's um, superpower? Mm -hmm. The world um, policeman, yes. You know, it's not only being a policeman; it, mm -hmm. it's also having a role in in many other areas, such as. For example, the fight against AIDS, the fight, you know, the, many Terrorism, international issues climate change and um, that like. require stronger leadership. Mm -hmm. And these issues outside of the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've been kind of un ongoing, but they yeah. haven't had enough prominence. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think the U.S. would have an interest in in reasserting its leadership role in these many other issues. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if there are allies, if there are other countries in the world that are able and willing to shoulder responsibilities in these areas, I am sure the Obama administration would welcome that. Yes. And there would be a lot of room for cooperation under the first dimension of multilateralism. Yes. Um, but I think a greater focus on not only spreading out the power structure, but also um, in diversifying the issues, mm -hmm. uh, the, the important issues. Yeah. Um, climate change, for example, yeah. um, the environment. I mm -hmm. think that is certainly one example of an issue area and that, that energy would, policy, energy, yeah. these would certainly have yes. a greater prominence in, in the um, foreign policy thinking of the new administration. I think the third mm -hmm. important area, of course, is the economic situation. Yes. And, um, you know, how, how to deal with this demand, this domestic demand for protectionist mm -hmm. measures, but at the same time, there are other countries in the world who expect an ongoing open trade relation with the United States in order to survive. So how, how, to, how to balance mm -hmm. the domestic needs with the need for liberal international trade, I think will be a serious challenge that yeah. the new administration will have to confront. But given the fact that mm -hmm. we are now in the midst of a one of the worst, if not the worst, mm -hmm. since the Great Depression, economic financial you know, turmoil. Now, how would you think the U.S. policy would reprioritize you know, its objectives? Maybe they will become more inward looking and focus more on the economic issues and also issues on climate change, on the environment, on energy, as compared mm -hmm. to the Bush years when a lot of the resources and attention were devoted to 
you know, the war on terror, mm -hmm. uh, Middle East, you know, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. How would that be different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you asked me about foreign policy, and yeah. I responded by telling you the economic situation is important because I don't think that is a domestic issue of the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. It's a global issue. Yes. And it, it has to be seen from a global perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and I think if the, by defining it as an internal issue or a domestic issue, I think we'll, we'll probably make the situation um, much Worse. more complicated. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm. So this will certainly be a challenge for mm. the new Obama government. Um, mm -hmm. The Democrats in the U.S., um, in Congress, uh, have a reputation for being um, less inclined to supporting free trade agreements. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. There have been some of them that have been uh, not not so supportive of free trade agreements. In fact, the fast track negotiating authority has been revoked, and mm. and and it's not certain whether whether will it will be yeah. reinstated. Mm -hmm. That's right. So this is a a serious challenge that the new Obama government will have mm -hmm. to deal with. Of course, during the campaign, Obama talked about supporting free trade agreements with certain countries, but not with others. Um, so how that's going to be worked out and in terms of balanced, the yeah. The, you know, the endorsement from Congress, um, what are the standards for promoting free trade agreements, uh, what mm -hmm. kind of reforms are needed in those certain countries uh, that we are thinking about. Are they going to be foreign policy tools or are they going to be trade and economic tools? Mm -hmm. um, and in, in all of this, for example, the trade and financial uh, situation with China will also be a very important question mm -hmm. for the United States. And, mm -hmm. and that is reflected on multiple levels mm -hmm. in American politics. Mm -hmm. Um, the exchange rate, um, the trade deficit, the trade deficit, the climate, the, the issue, jobs, yes. the climate issues, yeah. the steel workers, the auto workers <laughs> who are losing yeah. their jobs in the United States while their factories are moving to China. You know, all of these are very complicated, multi multiple level issues that yeah. can't be looked at simply from a domestic perspective. Yeah. Well, let's shift the focus now onto U.S.-Taiwan relations. I know you've been an active, you know, uh, you know, uh, participant in many of the uh, exchanges between Washington and Taipei during the years when DPP was in power. Uh, how would you recommend, you know, to the current government, you know, what are the do's and the don'ts in terms of managing the bilateral ties between Washington and Taipei? You know, over the past years of the DPP government, I think we have made some inroads. Uh, we have some had some successes, but we've also uh, run into some serious difficulties. Yes. And of course, if we look back, we can um, discuss what policies were the right ones and what were the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. um, and there were certainly, I think, some policy decisions that we made that were not um, welcomed in Washington. No. And and mm -hmm. Washington was not shy about making that point. Okay. Um, so yes, the restoration of of Trust. confidence yes. um, mm -hmm. is certainly important. But mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, that in itself is also multidimensional. Mm -hmm. It requires an understanding of the mutual strategic interests. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need to grasp what's important for the Americans, mm -hmm. and we also need to help Americans understand what's important for us yes. um, strategically. And yeah. we also need to be very clear about our own strategic perspectives yes. uh, to be able to effectively communicate those with the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 you know, this will go back to my original concern about the lack of consensus within Taiwan, the uncertainties about the direction Taiwan is going. Oh, yes. And 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 I think this has to be well understood within Washington. And mm -hmm. there are certain some that there will certainly be people who are very knowledgeable about Taiwan in the new administration. We've already been, seen some names in the papers, although they, they are not yet yes. confirmed in, in mm -hmm. positions. But mm -hmm. the Obama election campaign team did incorporate advisors who are very knowledgeable about Taiwan and who have made a sincere effort to try to understand us. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we disagree with their policies and they disagree with us, but yeah. at least they have made an effort to try to understand, understand. us. Yeah, that, and, I think that's very And that's important. important. Yes. So I think we need to keep the communication channels open yeah. and we yeah. need to keep this effort of trying to understand each other's strategic perspectives um, uh, I think that's force. very important, yes. I think a mutual friend of ours once told me uh, what is you know, important for both Taipei and Washington is how to operationalize our common interest. I think that will continue to be a challenge. Uh, when we come back to the Taiwan outlook, we will continue our discussion with Big Kim. I'm going to talk about her role in Taiwan politics 
what are the uh, some of the things that she regrets or some of the things that she welcomed in her journey so far. We'll be back in two minutes.